Hello and welcome to the program. My name is Marie Yambo. Our social media handles at Marie Yambo and at KBC Channel 1 on Twitter, KBC Channel 1 TV on Facebook. Now, endometriosis is a condition that affects up to 10% of women in their reproductive age. Symptoms may include pain and unusual bleeding. It may also affect a person's chances of becoming pregnant. Now, Dr. Charles Moteshi is an endometriosis expert. He will be explaining the cause of the condition, symptoms, and cure, if at all there is. Mary Diana Mboya has had endometriosis since she was 13 years old. She's here to share her experience. Welcome, both of you, to the program. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much for being here. I want to start with uh, Dr. Tari. First of all, just define for us, before we come to her and getting to know her experience, what is endometriosis? Endometriosis is a condition that affects uh, girls and women in their reproductive years. And uh, basically, it is a condition where uh, cells that are similar to the lining of the womb, which sheds during menstruation, uh, sit or live outside the womb lining. Mm -hmm. And so in, when they sit outside the womb lining, they behave exactly the, the same way the, the womb behaves. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you have periods of menstruation uh, during breakdown of the womb lining, it also causes uh, um, uh, inflammation in those areas, uh, which may cause pain. Okay. And uh, when we talked earlier, you said that uh, they can be found in other areas of the body. Probably we could just touch on that also. Absolutely. Um, it's um, uh, a bit of a mystery why you would find cells that should be in the uterus elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the uterus lives in the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you, you, know, you might find endometriosis uh, sitting very close to it, uh, either on the bowel uh, or the bladder or organs around it. Or sometimes it can be in places that are farther away, like in the chest mm -hmm. or the belly button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 did you say the, the chest or the lungs? The, the chest, yeah? Uh, yeah, in the yeah, chest in cavity the chest or the, the lungs. In the, yes. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that means um, chances of somebody uh, having it around the chest. So you'll have the same pain that you have around your uterus. You're having it um, around your chest. Yes, characteristically, it tends to coincide with your periods. Mm -hmm. So every time you have a period, then you get symptoms uh, mm -hmm. in your chest. Okay. So that explains sometimes, I remember back in school when we had, uh, you know, the young girls, uh, especially when they're in their menses, then you'll find maybe this person is not even able to go to class, um, they're sleeping, and it's really, it's really an excruciating pain. So you can understand why, because like you said, the, the, the tissue doesn't, uh, it doesn't break, the lining doesn't break down the same way uh, to release uh, the blood the same way it is in the uterus. So that is why they experience such excruciating pain. Yes, indeed. So uh, what actually happens is that uh, every time you have a period, yeah. uh, the body breaks away the lining, which yes. is like, uh, I, I call it like mincing away the lining. Mm -hmm. And if these cells are found elsewhere, the same chemical processes that are happen in the womb do happen there and they will be destroying these cells. But then because you don't bleed, uh, mm -hmm. there will be pain from that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that brings me to Diana, uh, Mary Diana. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, you said you've had this since you're 13 years old. Yes. Maybe yes. you could uh, explain to us just in brief some of the symptoms that you started experiencing. So when I was 13 years old, that's when uh, it all started. But during that time, we thought that I was having, uh, since that time I was diagnosed with a kidney problem. Mm -hmm. So anytime I'm on my menses, we, we thought I, I was, it's because of my kidneys. So we really did not know what it was. So I began having painful cramps, bleeding in between periods, like prolonged periods from January to June maybe. Mm -hmm. I could bleed like that and then so around Form 2, when I was in Form 2, mm -hmm. I remember there was a time I could bleed for a month. Then I was taken to hospital, uh, given some medication since they claimed it was hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we could not really know what was going on. So when I joined college, that's when we discovered it was endometriosis. Okay. They, I had my scan, but it, it w they did not discover. Then they came and discovered when I went for MRI. So after MRI, I went for my surgery last year, October. That's where they found it was on the, it had spread like in the intestines, uh, intestines, 
uterus, uh, rectum, mm -hmm. and uh, the cervix. Okay. It had really spread. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember back then I used to take easy dawaza kenyeji because we did not really know what was yeah. taking place. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, last year, that's when I went for my laparoscopic yes. Uh, that's surgery. Why surgery. That's why they did. So we'll it. come to the, the to the management or cure of it and all that, and whether for you having the experience then and now that you've already gone for your surgery, whether that d did actually um, you know change or at least there's a reprieve uh, in, in the condition. So, uh, doctor, you know um, I I the misdiagnosis, if I may put it, how rampant is it? Because a lot of the times the young girls are told, oh. You, 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 you know, as, uh, the, uh, you, you, when you get older or when you get children, it, the, the pain will go. That's the common um, uh, explanation. But for her, she suffered for so long without the proper diagnosis. So how big is misdiagnosis when it comes to endometriosis? I think the challenge comes uh, from the fact that uh, there are no typical signs or symptoms of endometriosis. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of think about it and uh, as a general practitioner or a doctor in the community, you probably see a lot more other things than just uh, endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And like I who sits in an office full of referrals and then endometriosis will be top of my head. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, because of pain, because of uh, uh, blood effects, because mm -hmm. of bowel uh, effects, mm -hmm. you have to think about a wide range of other conditions before you narrow down to endometriosis. That's why when the patient comes to you, uh, you have to uh, consider, for example, a young girl with pelvic pain, uh, there is a possibility of endometriosis, but it doesn't hit you as a first condition to affect uh, the patient. So you have to do tests that exclude other conditions, mm -hmm. and if they are negative, then you have to then think about endometriosis. It also means that uh, endometriosis can also affect you when you have other conditions. Mm -hmm. So it does not automatically imply that uh, if I diagnose something and I treat it, then it will be entirely uh, responsible for the symptoms. Okay. So it does masquerade around uh, a little bit. Okay. And so that still uh, brings me to the question. Is it not obvious now that it's, it's, uh, the, the awareness is um, out there that a girl of reproductive age, say from the time of teenagehood all the way, that if they have such kind of cramps, even if there are other conditions, then that is one of the, the issues that probably a doctor should, uh, should look at. So in her case, it began when she was 13 years old. Is it also possible to not uh, find it if at all she went for tests then? Does, it, that, does the condition become worse such that you're able to now diagnose it better when the person is older? It um, depends on the range of tests that you're gonna run. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a blood test that can pick up endometriosis, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if you do, um, uh, you know, imaging tests like uh, ultrasound scan or special, more uh, uh, advanced techniques like magnetic resonance imaging, what she referred to as MRI, yes. they may be able to pick endometriosis. But again, um, when they are negative, it does not mean it is not present mm -hmm. uh, because um, endometriosis manifests itself in different stages mm -hmm. or grades. Mm -hmm. So very early stage endometriosis will be very difficult to pick mm -hmm. uh, from uh, uh, you know, tests like ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And so you may require to do uh, uh, an operation like laparoscopy where you put a telescope to see. Uh, the good thing is that you don't have to always do that. You can start on treatment uh, by you know, trial. And if they do respond, then you carry on with it until the point where you feel well perhaps this isn't working or we need to change uh, or there, there's a, a change in goals for example someone who wants to get pregnant okay. and so you say well let's go in and uh, uh, check what is happening mm. okay so let me come back to you mary uh, diana so how bad did it affect you in the sense that what were you not able to do when you when, when you're experiencing the pain i remember i could not go to school I could not eat. There's nothing that I could do. You got Nashinda like I'm just sleeping down. I could just lie down during that period when I'm having my menses. Okay. So there's a time I remember I, I, I was working. Mm 
Then I tried to explain to my boss what takes place. Then she was like, she called me and told me, uh, Diana, we've sat down with the, with the board and we want to see you tomorrow. When I went there, they were just firing me wow. because of my problem. So it has made me can't go for work. I can't do like heavy duties and stuff mm. because of the condition. Mm -hmm. And how does it make you feel? Because this, obviously, it is not your doing. It's lack of awareness or uh, something like that. How did that make you feel that you were being fired, not because of incompetence, but of something that was way beyond? At know? that moment, I felt so bad because I remember they cried and called my dad. And then I, was ju I just went at home and told my mom, why is it that women are the people who are supposed to understand us? Why are they not understanding us? She was a woman. Why could she not just call me and try to, mm -hmm. to learn from what I'm experiencing? Yeah. So it really hurt me. But again, my dad was like, mm -hmm. you just come, sit with the people who will understand you. They won't understand what you're, what you're going through. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that is how I coped, and I'm just, um, uh, it's really, I remember I went into depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I went into depression. A and you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Muteshi, um, the lack of awareness mm -hmm. is s still a very big problem, whether in workplaces or just generally uh, in the public, mm -hmm. in as far as um, uh, endometriosis is concerned, but in normal terms, we'll say period pains uh, is concerned. And so, the, the fact that somebody is having pains, uh, people need to understand that it is not normal when you're having period pains, because period pains are not supposed. I mean, your menses are not supposed to be painful. But away from that, mm -hmm. uh, th what are the treatment options for somebody who has endo endometriosis? How do you manage that? Because I've seen people take painkillers; they even have adverts for it. You know, for some painkillers when you're on your menses, do they even work? Uh, yes, yeah, so treatment for endometriosis is individualized. Uh, and it's individualized in the sense that um, because it affects girls uh, who are very young to women who are older and mature. Uh, and so you cannot have, um, uh, uh, you know, a silver bullet or uh, a one uh, size fits all. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you may start by, uh, you know, just giving pain medications. If it's pain, the main uh, problem, mm -hmm. and you know, pain varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, if it's m mild to moderate pain that just requires some bit of pain uh, meds for periods, mm -hmm. then it may work. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, you have treated it; uh, you've just managed the pain. And there are times when those don't work. Mm. and uh, you have to move on to uh, much stronger medications. Mm. And uh, if you do that, then uh, you could consider a short trial. And if it's working, then you can say, well, let's continue with this. Mm. And uh, there are moments when uh, it's necessary to do an operation because one, the, the medications aren't working or it's complicated. It's complicated when you find endometriosis has affected the bowel and is causing obstruction. Mm. It's complicated when you find that en endometriosis has affected the ureters or into the kidneys or bladder and mm. is uh, causing obstruction. It, it's complicated if you find endometriosis in the chest or the lungs and yeah. is causing problems. So mm -hmm. you have to operate on it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what are the, um, uh, we, I'll come to Mary Diana to just understand how she's feeling now that she underwent the operation. But just also in brief, um, what are the options for a woman who is looking forward, a young woman like uh, Mary Diana, who's looking forward to uh, having children? Because it also affects fertility. What are the options for such uh, women? Uh, broadly, it's good to reassure that uh, not everyone with endometriosis will be unable to bear children. Uh, so they will have had to try uh, and it's failed before you consider fertility treatment. Luckily, mm -hmm. Uh, apart from treating endometriosis, I'm also a fertility doctor, so I can uh, handle both. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are also instances where you find endometriosis on the ovary. We call it endometrioma or mm -hmm. big cysts. They are like balloon-filled structures on the, uh, on the ovary, mm -hmm. and they'll require that uh, they are removed. If you go ahead to remove ovarian tissue or eggs that uh, are attached to it will come away, okay. and that can cause the ovaries to be damaged. So you then have to weigh and say, do so we have to individualize? Yes, do we okay. have to preserve your eggs, yeah. uh, which you can use in future? Okay, so there's also the preservation of the eggs. Somebody can actually do that. Absolutely. So, Mary Diana, how are you feeling now? You already you know the pain that you are undergoing during that time. It came to a point now that you had to go through surgery. So, has it worked? 
So far, I can't say because um, how will I put it? I'm not uh, premenopausal, is it? Like I'm not on my periods right okay, now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I am using some injection called Zoladex. Mm -hmm. That's the injection that I'm using for now. I can't really tell, but I'm having a problem with this left leg of mine. Mm -hmm. It's really painful. But what I can say after the surgery, I gained weight. Okay. I was 39 when I went in. Mm -hmm. I came out 51 kgs. Oh, okay. After so there is some improvement yeah, of some sort of, of weight. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's the future that will tell us whether or will tell you at least uh, if, if if the surgery worked. Yes. Uh, Doctor, our time is really running out. I thought we had so much time to discuss all this. Yeah. But yeah. just in short, is it hereditary or is it something that is caused by our lifestyle? Not directly so. We still don't understand fully, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, obviously with increased awareness, we see it clustering around maybe people in uh, the same family, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's because they picked it from their uh, parents, mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Mary Diana, what would you want people out there, out there to know about endometriosis? Hmm. I would want to say if if somebody is really experiencing painful cramps, do not ignore. Because for me, at first, I just thought they were normal. I remember when I was having the painful cramps, like my mom could tell me, yeah. but with time, mm -hmm. it became persistent and mm -hmm. persistent. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell someone, if your periods are really persistent, go to the doctor, don't ignore. Because as for me, I kept on ignoring and it became worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, exactly. You know, don't ignore the pain uh, and, and all that. And doctor, you'll agree with me. Mm -hmm. uh, having read a little bit, yes, your period pains are not supposed to be painful. Uh, is it normal to have pain during period discomfort? Probably, but pain. Uh, pain that bothers you is not normal. Mm. No. Okay. Yeah. So it should mm -hmm. not be ignored. Uh, it, it, it should not be ignored. No. Yeah, so the minute you feel like the pain is too much. It is something that you need to, 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 to see the doctor for. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any message you want to give our viewers in as far as uh, this particular condition is concerned? Uh, I think uh, importantly is that uh, endometriosis is common. Uh, it's no one's fault to have endometriosis, so it's uh, very useful that everyone understands it. Mm -hmm. And uh, take your time to uh, you know, know what it is. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, 50% of uh, ladies who have endometriosis don't mm -hmm. have symptoms. So don't assume that uh, I am completely normal, I don't have endometriosis. You could actually be carrying it around. Oh, really? Yeah. You can have endometriosis without having the excruciating pain? Absolutely, or? yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I just thought that <laughs> pain is one of the, <laughs> of the symptoms that automatically endometriosis comes with the pain. Not really. It can sit silently. Okay. And yeah. maybe manifest later. So sometimes you have it without knowledge, okay. and then much later in life something happens. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have an ad, an operation or some other pain causing event, mm -hmm. and, and then the pain starts from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Charles Muteshi, um, uh, endometriosis expert from the Aga Khan Hospital, and also thank you so much, um, Mary Diane Amboya for coming in and explaining to us what endometriosis is. Uh, and for you, Diana, sharing your experience, we are grateful for that. So thank you also back at home for taking your time to watch. And I hope that you get to understand uh, what endometriosis is. It's a wide subject. Definitely there is more to talk about. And so we hope that Dr. Muteshi will be able to come back again another time and talk about infertility probably and how it causes infertility. So thank you so much for taking your time. Hope to see you again next uh, week. Uh, my name is Marie Yambo.